Greetings, magical mavens. If you found your way to this channel, chances are the way you interact with life could fall under the umbrella of what's known as spiritual naturalism, which is the concept of synthesizing the mundane and the transcendent, or that virtue consists in a will that is in agreement with nature. In this podcast episode, I've invited my witchy BFF, Ashura De Rosa, to chat about the holistic practice of spiritual naturalism and the importance of working intuitively with natural patterns, cycles, and phases to make healthy and sustainable life choices. If you've been around my neck of the woods for a while, you may remember Ashura from our old podcast called Pick Your Potion where we used to get together on every seasonal Sabbath to drink cocktails and talk about how to see the magical and the mundane. Now she's founded Whole Stories Therapy and is a licensed marriage and family therapist, a writer, and an educator. With a background in peer-to-peer sexual health education and violence prevention advocacy, she holds both a bachelor's degree in global gender studies and a master of arts in marriage and family therapy. Asherah's therapeutic style is bespoke, collaborative, sex positive, and identity affirming. She works to create an inclusive space through practicing cultural humility and providing client-centered care with a social justice lens. She is kink and poly knowledgeable and LGBTQ plus celebrating. She's also a wife, a witch, and a mom of two cats and two twin toddlers. We invite you to grab something cozy or refreshing to drink and join us for this inspiring conversation where we're touching upon the holistic practice of spiritual naturalism and the importance of working intuitively with natural patterns, cycles, and phases to make healthy and sustainable life choices tapping into your inner child, or spending time with children to remember the simple wonders of nature and life. How learning a little bit more about your astrology chart can help you achieve more balance, self-acceptance, and healthy relationships. Some witchy parenting and relationship tips, and some simple home and kitchen magic, and how to weave positive intention into your everyday life. Working with the seasons and moon phases to grow a business or advance in your career, and some Swedish seasonal traditions from Asherah's family of origin. So without further ado, let's chat with my friend Asherah. Hey, Ashra, it's been a hot minute. How are you? Yes, it's been a hot many minutes. I'm doing well, keeping busy as per my usual state of being. And yeah, how are you? Good. It's been like an insane year in a good way. So mm-hmm. it's like the yeah. opposite of 2020. So. <laughs> so that's good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All the movement, all the stuff, do it right now. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're going to just jump into these questions about the seasons. I know you, I already, like, I know what some of your answers to these are going to be, but for the audience, we'll pretend that it's a fresh, totally new conversation and hopefully I'll learn some new things too. Yeah. So first things first, do you have a favorite Sabbath or season? Probably spring. Um, I like uh, the rebirth. I like the hopefulness. I like um, the... Just like the waking up um, of it all. And the, hey, here we are. We didn't, it, like, I know it felt like a really long pause, especially after like Western New York winters, which can feel like the long, dark tea time of the soul. So, yes, <laughs> that's like the nice way of saying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny because, like, I always thought Samhain was your favorite. Well, Samhain's the best holiday. Spring is the best season, Um, (laughs) but I mean, I I love me some Easter vibes too. I love that. Uh, I love all the symbols. I love all the storytelling. I love all of that stuff. So no, totally spring. All right, cool. I'm learning things. This is fun. (laughs) So what inspires you most about working with the wheel of the year overall? Um, I I think like, uh, I'm, I identify myself more as a spiritual naturalist um and what that means is I'm looking at the system as a whole um and I I find it a very holistic way to approach things um and 
uh, you're working with the energy instead of against it. And um, I mean, when I'm working with an individual or a couple or a throuple or what, I, what have you, I'm looking at those patterns and I'm seeing like, I, I don't wanna go against the, the energy that's there. If it's time to rest, it's time to rest. If it's time to give a new skill or to begin cultivating something, that's clear. I'm not gonna say, oh, rest instead of cultivate. Um, so I like working with instead of against. I think it's just easier, um, but not in a lazy way. It's just more intuitive. Yeah, I love that. And like, it's so cool to understand the concept of seasons within the calendar as well as just within people's lives, you know, because not mm -hmm. everyone's seasons are exactly the same. So it's important to be able to like, see like, oh, okay, it's spring for you, but maybe it's like winter in real life or like, you know, vice versa. Right. Right. And I mean, we just passed Lamas um, and that's like the first harvest. And um, I, in my own personal, like in my rune readings, and I had a friend do a tarot card pull for me on, on the last full moon, I'm getting a lot of like rest vibes, um, which makes a lot of sense to me. And I'm reading like, but I'm reading it differently. It's not like you have to put a pause on it. It's like very frustrating. It's like, okay, you just read a marathon, like chill. Like, like you, you don't have to have your hands in every pot right now. You don't have to, you don't have to babysit everything right now. It's like building a machine that is self-sustaining. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So is it often this time of year when you feel like you need to rest or is this just like circumstantial at the moment? It's very much circumstantial. Um, usually I'm starting to like, and, and maybe, I mean, that's, it's more of a recharge right now um, because it's like the, um, at least in the therapy world, I've noticed that um, the holidays can be very triggering for people. And so I end up very, very busy, especially with couples. There was like, one year it was like December 27th and I'd seen everybody and like I had like six or seven appointments that day and each couple was like you're never gonna believe it we we fought on Christmas and like you and everybody else <laughs> in the way with them. like <laughs> um whereas I really broke uh, up so, with someone after a, a bad Christmas I was just like I'm not, I'm not doing this again next year like I'm out of here New yeah. year. <laughs> right where and, and because I mean I think circumstances of being in western New York uh, there's not much more to do. So people are more prone to focus on their relationships. Where in the summer, I get a bit of a lull. I work on bigger, more sustained projects. Like I'll teach, um, I've, I will expand my practice. I'll do continuing it. I'll do all these other things um, because I'm not, I'm, I, people would rather go argue at a barbecue than go to couples therapy. So yeah. um, I'm like, all right, I'll see you in the fall. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so now it's a bit of a recharge after having completed a lot of projects and now just sort of like doing the maintenance of them, um, giving myself a chance to s sit back and be more present with my family, um, with my children, with my, with my husband. Um, and that feels far more fulfilling to me and it, it feeds right back into the work that I do. Um, that's all related. Yeah. And speaking of family, I know your little ones are super duper little still, but like, are yeah. you excited to teach them about the seasons or like, have you started in any oh, way? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, we're just like, we, we spend a lot of time outside. We spend a lot of time in nature. Um, they'll be two in three months. Um, so they are fully in toddler, the swing of things. Um, really just loving this immersive tactile world that they live in. Like um, the one daughter, uh, my one daughter, she loves to tap things. She gets sticks and she just taps everything. Um, and we were at the zoo yesterday and she's got her stick and she was like waving it at people and say, so like, is she casting a spell on me? I was like, yep. Um, <laughs> oh, slings in training. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. Um, I, my other daughter um, just like loves dirt, loves gravel. Um, she just massacres the poor black eyed Susans at my parents' house. Just, but like she wants to feel everything. And I think like that um, 
like that's just such a good reminder as an adult that's like like we as we grow we live up here a lot more and when we're little we are just like so immersed in the environment um so it's I don't know I mean I'm going to teach them things they teach me things um they've got their own set of wisdom uh so I'm I don't think it's like a top-down thing I think it's more of a, a pass back and forth I love that because so many parents are just like, oh, how do I teach this kid how to life? This is so much pressure, but it's like, they'll kind of teach themselves parts of it. In fact, they'll even teach us because there's aspects of it, especially as like witches, for example, yeah. there's aspects of our practice where we're trying to re-evoke the inner child, but maybe we don't actually remember. Maybe we need a little person to kind of like remind us what it's all right. about. Right. I mean, I, I've talked to, I've talked to my husband about this many times. I mean, I think they, the one thing they have taught me is patience. Um, there is no rushing them. Uh, and if you do try and rush them, it will actually take twice as long. So it's like lunchtime can, can take the set amount of time that it takes. But if I try if it, say lunchtime always takes like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. If I'm like, Ooh, I got something to do. And I really like, I'm trying to get them to eat. They're going to sense that. And they're gonna be like, no, no, no. Lunch takes how long I think lunch takes. Bedtime, yeah. bedtime always takes as long as it's going to take. Like I can't make them wind down faster. Mm -hmm. I can, I can try and set the stage for it, but they want to play. Uh, and not fighting against that and working with their rhythms and like structuring our whole day. So it's like, well, don't coop them up all day. Then of course they're going to go bananas at bedtime. Like if I'm playing with them all day and we're having these immersive experiences in nature instead of two and a half hours it might only take an hour and a half so and that's a win <laughs> so like that's sort of how it goes yeah and that's the thing with like children animals like they respond to their instincts and like for example mm -hmm. like I have a cat who is nocturnal not all cats are nocturnal. Not all cats are nocturnal all the time, but this cat is nocturnal all the time. <laughs> and like I have tried everything to be like, oh, you know, Googling, like, can I make my nocturnal cat not nocturnal? And it's like, you can, again, set the stage. You can try to like play with him and I'm tired out before bed. Maybe he'll give you a few hours, but at some point, you know, whether it is at midnight or at 4 a.m., he's going to be bouncing off the walls. <laughs> and that's just that's nature. <laughs> we have to like mm -hmm. learn that's to, nature. yeah, we have to like learn to, that's a, the challenge of being human. It's like, we want to control things and we have like certain boundaries, but if we love something, we have to learn to work with its cycles and like make our cycle work with its cycle. And if it's not something we love, then we have to like walk away, which, you know, we're not going to do to our baby or our cat, hopefully, <laughs> but mm -hmm. That's yeah. Nature teaches us so many lessons. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I, 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 I do think walking away is important sometimes. I mean, not for a long time, but if I'm becoming frustrated um, and it's just like toddler time um, and I'm really happy that I have twins for this reason. Cause I think it, it gives a, uh, there, there comes a point where it's like, you got to walk away. You got to get your, put your face on, right? Like get it, get it together then come back and try and come back with more patience. Um, but if you're getting overwhelmed, trying to just like fight, 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 and you're in a power struggle, whether it's with a toddler or a cat or um, just Life a, in general. Irate, person, <laughs> irate person out in the world, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to tangle with this. I don't have that. I don't have unlimited energy. I need to, I need to conserve it. I'm going to pick my battles. Um, and it, I think it's a bit, it doesn't necessarily make you a pushover. It just m makes you wise with how you're going to interact with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love how every time we start talking about seasons, we just immediately get deep into psychology. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love you. I mean, yeah, some, somewhat it's like, um, yeah, I, I don't know if I would, but that is psychology necessarily is just sort of like, I, for me, it's a little philosophical, but there it's, it's well, you're uh, a Sagittarius. Everything you do is philosophical. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what if, oh my God. Yeah. I'm the most like abstract thinker in the world. And then when, when it's like, okay, put together this bookshelf, I'm like, 
ooh, <laughs> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is some totally off topic, well, not totally off topic, but slightly off topic fun news that I recently discovered. So I'm currently taking a astrology course, finally, after oh. years and years of wanting to. And what's great about it, it's with my friend Tanae Stewart, and she usually talks about it in the context of the wheel of the year which like is so much easier to learn because you learn that the zodiacs have everything to do with the seasons and yeah I also learned like I'm sure everyone out there who knows anything about astrology is like well duh but I just learned about houses so I just found out that I too am a Sagittarius because even though my sun sign is Aquarius it's in the house that's ruled by Sagittarius so that's oh, why wow. we're best friends. <laughs> oh. like, well, apparently we're both Sagittarius. I don't, best. I don't know anything about houses. Like, um, so you'll have to like sit down and explain it to me sometime. Cause I've, I like, I've only like kind of treaded in that water. And then I was like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, lot, unless like, like, that's why I love learning it in the context of the seasons, because it's yeah. just so much easier when you realize like it's all part of the same system and they're not separate. So yeah, maybe sometime we'll yeah. have some glasses of wine and I'll read your, I'll attempt to read your birth chart. <laughs> we will see. I don't know yeah. if I'm there yet. <laughs> totally fair, but you can totally, you can, you can take a gander and see what you what you can glean from it. Um, cause I'm always, I'm always open to those kinds of insights. Um, and I uh, learning just about what your planets are, I think is, is really interesting too, uh, to mm-hmm. just say like, Oh, all right. Like that, um, it gives you some insights. Not that it's like a thing that you're like, well, I'm a Taurus. So, you know, it's like, no, like this is where the direction I like to flow in, but I also have these other considerations. I just pulled Taurus out of my, out of my hat. Taurus is always the one people are like, ah, oh, let's just pick on Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> At least I, I do. Always ready to Capricorn, but <laughs> but I have a stellion in Capricorn, so I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, I got that big Capricorn energy. I know that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm like learning more about that too, because as you know, we both have the crazy Capricorn stellium. I also found out yeah, that my yeah. partner has it as well, so. Okay. Yeah, it's so interesting when you just look at the other stuff and you're like, whoa, this explains so much more about me. <laughs> I, I, I looked at my hu- my husband's birth chart and he's not super into astrology. So he's he um he doesn't uh know the lingo ness- as much. And I was kind of wondered why we like because we complement each other oddly well. Um, but we're both like super weirdos. Aren't you um, both? But I looked at Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And my kids were like a day away. Mm-hmm. They're on the cusp, but um, I-, I wanted an all Sagittarius household. Damn it. I was rooting. Um, <laughs> I, you know, they came when they came. <laughs> I you know what would have happened? As long you, as they could. <laughs> you know, maybe but, the uh, universe was like, if there's four Sagittariuses, they're just going to burn the house down. This is not happening. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but um, my stellion is in Capricorn, and all the all of my Capricorn ones, his stellion is in Virgo. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Ow!" I was like, "That that's what makes sense." Like both very like responsible, like like we 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 love to party, we love to like you know get foot loose and fancy free, but we're both very like work oriented, but in slightly different ways. He's far more detail oriented than I am, um, but also willing to like compromise. Um, I was like oh okay there's a lot of lineup here <laughs> which was cool cool to see it's always so, so interesting to learn things about like the people we love too because then just yeah, yeah. Sense. but speaking of your husband has he participated in any of your like witchy seasonal celebratory traditions at all or are you still like pretty not particularly talented? um I mean he's very respectful of my spiritual path um he uh, I don't know. I think he's sort of an enki do kind of man where he's sort of like wild man out about nature when he has the opportunity to be. Um, and he, he, he keeps himself fairly removed from it, but it is funny because um, uh, like if something's happening, um, like it, 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 I don't, I don't remember. I can't come up with an example. It was like a job situation, a promotion, something like that. And he like, ran home and he's like baby 
you gotta go burn some bay leaves go outside burn some bay leaves <laughs> I, was like, I love it I was like what, well, what do you want he's like I don't know <laughs> I was like okay <laughs> but so I was like okay yeah I'll go burn some bay leaves for you and he was like cool awesome and then I kind of leave it at that like so he knows a little bit of the lingo of my spiritual practices but I've always been a solitary practitioner I practice a little bit in the context of my family of origin but um I've always been a little bit reclusive with it so um it's not uncomfortable and I don't feel out of sorts being that way sometimes that's all you need like just give me my space and respect me and it's all good <laughs> kind of yeah I mean I yeah I'm an only child latchkey kid so that's sort of my uh, modus operandi that's most comfortable I'm like my stuff <laughs> so yeah. yeah I'm learning that too like I don't live with my partner but he visits like twice a week and mm. I've had to tell him, like, don't put your keys in your hat on the altar. That's not what that's there for. <laughs> but oh, like, right. yeah. He's yeah. spiritual. Yeah. He just like is not like he doesn't, again, know the lingo of like the witchy, witchy side of things. So he's like just kind of learning stuff. And yeah, like sometimes like, for example, for llamas or it wasn't even for llamas. It was for the full moon that just happened. But I basically did llamas like stuff. And mm. so we made corn dollies together and like I made a female and he made a male and we wrote little like spells for each other and like stuffed them inside and it was so cute. So like, it's fun to do stuff like that. But like, if I'm ready to do some like serious, like shadow work or some kind of just like, you know, there's some spells I just, again, need to be alone for and need to just have my own space. So it's kind of fun to just sort of balance it and see, see what happens. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, um, I'm more of like a, well, I do sol solitary practitioner work. It's a lot of like kitchen witchery. So it's like um, how I make food is uh, a spiritual practice. Like um, I make the girls, we call them cheesy eggs, but like all of their, uh, like I cut up all these veggies. I can hide so many vegetables and eggs. It's like, it's out of the control. Um, and I mean, I'm, when I'm stirring it, I'm stirring it clockwise. I'm thinking about them growing up big and healthy and being protected. And I put in turmeric and black pepper and I put in like all of these things like garlic because I'm like, I want them to be healthy. And so it's like, it's, it's more of like a way of living and less of a, a thing that I'm doing. Like I, it's not removed from my life. When I, I make my partner a sandwich every day, I put like the room for partnership on there. I like think about him having a good day I like make sure that that's just part of how I cook um and it, so it's yeah it's not it's not a, a thing that is in, in any way shape or form removed from my life um it's just like it just baked into like every little thing I love that and I've always said if I if I did cook for people which I don't anymore because me and my partner have like completely different eating habits but like if I cooked for people I would be that person putting all the positive energy and you know stuff and like every morning if I'm making like toast or something I'll like use the honey and draw a little pentacle and say my little affirmation you know it's just yeah it's just part of the fabric of life and it, it's mm -hmm. weird to me that some people are like like, how do I do magic when it's just like, just take whatever you naturally do and put intention into it. That's it. You know, <laughs> I'm like, that's really yeah, the yeah. simplest yeah. way. And yeah, giving yourself an, an opportunity to be present with yourself and to kind of, I mean, I mean, this is where it definitely does move into psychology and, and um, I, the idea of the change process and saying like, okay, um, what is, what does success look like for me today? Because some days it's like out of bed, teeth brushed, we're putting our gold star on this day. Other days it's like, okay, we're gonna take no prisoners. We're gonna get, like, get some shit done. Um, and how do I, if I have all of these tasks, like how do I reverse engineer? What does that start with? Like, I have so many things on my plate today. I have so many sessions. I have like all of this stuff. I can't can't be like at the casino until five in the morning, like, you know, ripping shots, like in, and, and be present. Um, I, that's just like, you know, <laughs> like, I, have you know, ever done that? that. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I've definitely been like, but I mean, bartend and stuff, it would be, you know, I'm not setting myself up for success to be a good therapist and a business owner. If I'm doing these things the day before I have mm -hmm. to work with it and say, 
okay, there's a time and a space for this. There's nothing wrong with this inherently. You need to blow off steam. You can't blow off steam and screw the rest of your week. Like yeah. in, in thinking long-term and thinking, okay, we're like taking responsibility and agency over your own existence and just being present with yourself. So that way you're not burnt out. So speaking of owning a business, cause I know it's, is it still within your first year? I just passed my first year. Um, oh yay, congrats. And I, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I just um, began to expand. I hired an employee. Uh, I am hiring hopefully more therapists in the future. I'm collaborating with other therapists. We're working on creating a different sort of experience for people. Um, and I'm shifting my own practice. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start doing uh, mental health evaluations to support people seeking um, asylum uh, and putting together those mental health evals. So that way they've got this piece that can um, they can bring to their immigration officer, to their court hearing, to their um, to the process that says like, yes, I need asylum because if X, Y, and Z. Um, that is so awesome. it's like, yeah, doing some more social justice work, doing the things that really feed me, doing the things that really like make me feel good um, and shifting my, my focus a little bit. And like for many years, I was putting more and more things on my plate and I'm still putting things on my plate, but I'm also like taking many things off and saying, okay, I can, I, I don't have to front load anymore. I can't hire, like speaking of llamas, I can harvest. Mm -hmm. I can say, okay, what, like, how do we make this last the winter? How do I do that without wearing myself ragged? Um, because I want to be present. Uh, and so it's shifting the philosophy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that you're completing your first year and like doing amazing, by the way, like for your first year of business, <laughs> you are killing it. Like, this is insane. Like every time I talk to you, you're sure. like, oh, yeah, I'm taking like 10 more steps, you know, like big steps. And so yeah, yeah. Yeah, have you, did you feel at all like your year as a business owner was kind of affected by like the way that you interact with seasons? Like, for example, we're harvesting now. And like, did you feel like you were planting seeds in the spring and kind of tending over yeah. summer? Yeah. Well, I, I set intentions with each new moon and um, I uh, do my bay leaf practice. Um, I have all, all sorts of like rocks and trinkets and you know all my stuff in my office um changing things out and just like you know trying to thinking of what the overarching goal is and then aligning my daily practices to support that um and then after the full moon I usually give myself like a little bit of a break uh to um not let everything go awry but instead of just being like push forward, push forward, push forward, giving my myself a chance to see like, okay, well, what's happening? What pots are simmering? What ones need more attention? What doesn't? Um, like more of a maintenance. And then as a, with each new moon reassessing, like, okay, well, if we're at, like, just the nuts and bolts of, of hiring on a person saying, okay, I need X amount of different types of insurances. I need to do these bureaucratic paperwork things I need to like move these things forward otherwise it can't happen and uh finding some follow-through um and setting some own, my own personal goals whether those are like I want like asking I want three of x these kinds of cases this month because these are the ones that I'm finding really fulfilling to work with right now I want I want to see these people like see these people give them the tools so they can have less of my support on um, uh, I need to say hey maybe this isn't a great fit over here for for some clients because I'm not the therapist for everybody but uh, whatever it is just continually it's like a bonsai tree just continually doing maintenance and saying like okay what what do we need um so it's well well manicured yeah. So you're, that's right. You're a moon lady. And do you feel mm -hmm. like the way you kind of manifest through the year is more so through the moons and then the seasons are more kind of just for themes or like, how does that sort of play together for you? 
it depends. Um, it, I mean, the moon, the moons are just a little bit more like they, they, they work in tandem. Um, having, uh, I, I will plant a lot more seeds when I have the time over, um, the spring and summer. Uh, and then the winter, because it's so like work is usually so bananas. I'm working to, um, maintain, um, but using the, the cycles in between, um, saying like, okay, um, in early spring, uh, the early spring new moon, I'm looking forward for the whole year and saying like, what do I want to do like this year? Um, and that was coincided with moving into a new practice space. We like me and my business partner ended up like doing a build out and, you know, just really like imagining this, this thing that is, is only starting to come to fruition now. Um, and it, I won't be taking on projects like that in the winter at the no, new moon at the, in December new moon, I'm going to be like, all right, I need a break. Uh, <laughs> um, like, how do I make that happen? How do I manifest more like personal well being? How do I manifest more family time? And like, how do I prioritize that? So it just looks different. Um, so it's not one or the other. It's just like in tandem. Gotcha decorating let's talk about something fun do you decorate for the seasons um somewhat I might change my altar a little bit um I I mean we put out I mean more so for things like Christmas um because we have very specific cultural tra traditions um especially in my family of origin uh so uh, we we bring out heirlooms and um do a lot more family-centered things uh with that and like I am uh Swedish I uh, so we always put apples on our Christmas tree not like oh, we don't, cool. yeah uh, I don't really know the whole story about that but um just something we've always done uh so in pulling out um things that my ancestors have passed down to us um like that would be the most like decorating thing um I definitely uh, try and use like a Bagua map in my home, like for feng shui um, and being mindful of that. That's also very much like how my office is set up. Um, like, and that works. Th does that change around with the seasons? It doesn't change with the seasons, but it is just like when we're talking about decorating, I'm like, that's what, what comes to mind for me. Um, but yeah, it, it would mostly be keeping it fresh keeping my environment fresh keeping it so I like respond to it in a way with I do try and like time things out with the moon again um or but also I mean with the seasons uh, spring cleaning is a thing like mm -hmm. jettison all of your like dusty old energy give it to somebody else put it out for bulk trash get that thread up egg like get it out of here and then, yeah. yeah, so it's definitely a little bit more spring in my step at those points in time to like overhaul and just shed what needs to be shedded. Yeah, same here. But like, I've learned that I also do spring cleaning in the fall because it's like, I don't want to go into a, especially again here in New York where you're like stuck inside. I don't want to go through a whole nother winter with like random junk in my house. You know what I mean? Or like, I know. yeah, yeah, no, you can miss me with that. Like, <laughs> and, yeah, and I think it's definitely become a lot more of our practice now that we have kids that just like grow constantly. And the amount of clothes, these kids are laundry machines right now. We, we've been doing no shirt summer because I just needed to like take a few things off of the laundry plate, but you have to go through it, like get rid of it, bring in the new crap of stuff. Um, Cause there's just not space to be sentimental with every piece of clothing that they have. Um, like, of course we keep things like, cause then there's too yeah. much of everything. Oh my God. Yeah. Of course we keep things like their first sneakers. They're like, you know, they're, they're like chamois from when they were super teeny tiny. And now I'm like, yep, uh, they're cute. Like <laughs> I can't, um, we got to really razzle dazzle me in order for me to want to keep that energy hanging around. Yeah. 
And you mentioned being a kitchen witch, obviously. So Mm -hmm. do you bring like seasonal cooking in to your practice at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, Preferring to use what's fresh, um, preferring to use, um, especially stuff that I know is, you know, local or ethically sourced or um, reducing food waste in some way, being more like um, in the world. Uh, and feeling responsible for the world. Uh, So um, trying to work more with that, uh, which I think is helpful. And I mean, I love, uh, like it's too hot for soups right now. Just not, I'm not having 90 soup in 90 degree weather. My have gazpacho, but no, yeah. Um, But there is something nice in the fall of being like, okay, we're gonna, have this all set up and it's just going to like simmer all day and the house is going to smell lovely. Um, and, uh, I mean, using like teamwork in the house to collaborate on those things because of the way our schedules work out, I'll prep things and then my husband can finish the tasks later. So there's a lot of passing on and off and that feels nice too, uh, and connective, even if we're not necessarily cooking together. Yeah, it's like it even almost has that sort of cyclical vibe to it where it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, the sort of give and take. I love that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. It helps. It helps like it helps everything run. Well, thank you so much. This has been awesome to kind of kick off my new little series here. It was fun to bring you back on. So far, you've been obviously on our podcast that we used to have. And then I think you've also been on podcast once and now you're helping me kick off this new series so thank you for being your magical (laughs) I'll keep on keeping on yeah (laughs) you too it's good to see you again (laughs) you'll have to come and see these like small people that I live with they're very small Uh, I'm like other than the fact that they look exactly like you guys I'm not even going to recognize them from the last time I saw them they were just like these little beans (laughs) oh yeah no no they're they're whole people like it's crazy how they fast run. they grow oh my goodness yeah they're real tall they're real tall <laughs> but yeah and i'll catch you on the flip side thanks for having me on see you next time bye bye so magical mavens what are your thoughts about the topics we touched upon in this conversation I would love to know what your experience has been with spiritual naturalism, merging the magical with the mundane, or literally anything else this conversation may have sparked in your mind. I invite you to let me know in the comments, and for more seasonal living magic, I invite you to check out this playlist right here.